I just shoot with a 2023. Uh, yeah, I do not approve these shoes list. Uh, Immortality three. Um, I do not approve because it's not as good as a two or three, a two or the ones. It's not even. It's not even. It's we expect it to be better, but it's not even the same. It's kind of mediocre. It feels like they say it's lunar lawn, but it's firm as hell. Uh, I don't know. It's the same traction from the ones and twos. Nothing different. So why are we doing this? Uh, Luca two. Uh, Luca one was hard as rock. Luca two is slightly softer, but uh, for Jordan Brand, for one of the best players in the world. Uh, I guess he really doesn't like cushioning in the shoe. And the fit is really weird. It feels like those uh, earlier original uh, uh, Nike Indestruct warm shoes where the shoe is meant to fit Dennis Rodman's shoe exactly. I guess the shoe is meant to fit um, Luka Doncic's fit per foot perfectly because I feel like it's a really weird fit. Um, Lamello 3, 2s uh, and 1s were okay. 2s was pretty much like 1. 3 feels more like a cheaper, lousier version of Dame 7, so you paint the picture. Rigor AR1, uh, Chinese brands are doing incredible. Uh, the, um, the 361s, Anta, um, Peak, Leaning, their cushioning traction is amazing these days. I don't know how much they can get better in terms of making their shoes, these Chinese brands, but Rigor, what the hell were they thinking? It's like, again, zero cush basically zero cushioning. The insole is pretty much it. Uh, the traction is okay, uh, kind of like the Harden 7, not exactly full dust proof, uh, and it's not exactly the most affordable shoe out there. So yeah, rigor is, in my opinion, if they don't do something about the cushioning, they're done. Design was okay. Uh, Curry 11, yeah, Curry 10 was great compared to the 9s and the 11s. Curry 11 is as bad as the 9, but it costs more and it's uglier. <laughs> Uh, Jordan 38. Um, it's great. I love the design. I think it's a beautiful shoe, but they did something crazy. Um, the zoom trouble is there. You can feel it. That's okay. But at the same time, there's a crazy plate on the forefoot that kind of hinders uh, the outsole. And the outsole pattern also because it's with that circular point and there are some flat areas. So depending on where you're stepping around with it, you might slip. There's a, there are dangerous spots all over the forefoot and those little plates with the rubber, they break or wear out faster than they, they eat themselves up. That's a durability issue. And also uh, because there's such a thick plate in the forefoot and there's nothing in the heel, you feel that, that uh, uh, weird, crazy, unstable imbalance between the heel and the forefoot. Also, the, the red part for the first colorway, the Cushlon midsole, you can see that it's much thicker on the forefoot than on the heel. So what the hell were they thinking? Because they've had an extra height to the forefoot where the heel is just all the way down. So if you want to freaking break your Achilles heel, go get the 38s. Um, also, KD16, the same one. Plate on the forefoot, not on the heel. Um, the zoom and the midsole is thicker in the forefoot. The heel has nothing but air struggle that just immediately sinks and flattens out. So if you want to, if you have a really strong Achilles heel and you want to break it down, go get the KD-16. Uh, the Zion 3 is a weird shoe, the beautiful design. Um, the, 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 the drop in missile feels plush and nice, but it's narrow as hell. The forefoot zoom is really thick and nice. I just like the drop in midsole, but the shoe itself stinks. Uh, it's got a weird fit really narrow and there are a lot of pinching points and the outdoor pattern is very mediocre and crazy slippery 